Our next speaker is in his third season here at Notre Dame. In 2017, he was a linebackers coach before being elevated to defensive coordinator prior to last season. In 2018, he coached linebacker All-American Tavon Coney, as well as Werfel winner Drew Tranquil. Our next speaker is the Bob Hinton defensive coordinator and linebackers coach, Clark Lee. Thanks, Nick. Uh, f first of all, you know, uh, what you guys didn't see was there was about a, like a five minute argument um, before I came out because I'm not important enough to actually get someone to introduce me. Uh, so I'm a little embarrassed by that. But um, I want to first of all thank you for being here. And any time that I get a chance to speak on behalf of Notre Dame or speak on behalf of this program, um, I consider it like just the deepest honor and privilege. Uh, to represent uh, this place and to represent Coach Kelly. Um, and, you know, I'm going to talk about linebacker play today, but I, I want to be really clear that, you know, I don't pretend to have all the answers. Um, we have a system of development here that I feel like has, has helped us along, but it's constantly evolving. And to me, you know, uh, being effective is about staying ahead and, and, and really like um, seeing the need of the unit and filling the need. And so hopefully what, what I have taken over the years, uh, you too can take and use for, for your own. And please, um, you know, if, if you need anything after this or if there's anything else uh, that I can do to help you, um, please let me know. But, um, it, you know, again, this isn't by any means the Bible. It's just, it's just our little instruction manual. Um, and so with that, let's get going. The other thing is, you know, I, I, I always at clinics enjoy hearing about fundamental technique, hearing about um, player development. I think, you know, as a coach, you need to have passions in a few areas. Um, I think you have to have a passion as a, a teacher. I think that's got to be really important to all of us that we, that we have a voice that can influence, a voice that can communicate, because if we want our players to communicate, we, we have to set the tone for that. Um, I think you have to have a passion for uh, fundamental and technical development. I mean, that's something that excites me. And hopefully that comes through in the way, um, you know, I share today that, you know, this stuff is invigorating to me. And, and the fact that it keeps evolving, the fact that the game seems to reset every year, you know, allows you to stay engaged at the most basic levels um, as to what's important for your players. And the, and the third area is, you know, we better be into player development, into character development. And um, really that third area, I don't know that any of us are effective if we don't first coach the person. Um, and even at Notre Dame, that's kind of where I start my day every day, um, is just trying to make sure that um, my voice is heard, but it's heard because these guys know I have a deep respect for their sacrifice and their commitment to what we're trying to get done. And, um, you know, I don't believe in in uh, you know, browbeating the guys. Um, I, I believe in trying to speak into existence what, what lies within them. And that's really carried me a long way in this. So with that, let's get going on uh, fundamental linebacker play. And so what I have up here is essentially the kind of the five buckets that we draw from. Um, every day we'll have drill work from each of these buckets. And however we determine or whatever we determine the need of the unit is. So like right now, even in that, I just caught a little bit of that highlight video, there's a lot of Tranquil, a lot of Coney. Well, those guys are gone. <laughs> so I would, they would say I would have my work cut out for me now. You know, we have to reestablish an identity as a, as a linebacker unit. And so we are spending, and you will see this tomorrow, a ton of time on the two highlighted points there. Um, point of entry work, which some people um, refer to as block protection, block destruction, whatever. We say point of entry because we're talking about how we enter the line of scrimmage uh, or how we enter the play on the perimeter and then tackling. And I don't know that you can be an elite linebacker or an elite linebacker unit if you don't do those two things really well. The, the heart, and if, you, if you've ever um, been here or if you've ever heard me share before, the kind of heart of our belief system or our, our core beliefs from a fundamental development standpoint, starts with that first point, and that's second level footwork. This, this is like, um, like ultimately, you know, kind of my, my greatest passion in, in skill development is how our players move 
anatomically, how they move, how they shift weight, how we redirect, um, how we become more efficient movers at the second level. Um, you know, we can talk about the game being a game of inches. I'm really interested in, in, in coaching players in a manner that allows them to capture that inch. And so, um, you know, you won't see it as much tomorrow at practice because we have such a need for those second and third points and those kind of are taking a priority. We've had three years of, of really like, um, you know, deep commitment to footwork, but normally in a practice, that first point would be the, um, the, the primary focus. All right, and then pass coverage, pass rush. We won't talk about those today. Those are also things that we do here. Point of entry work, again, it's really um, three things for us. It's, it's how we um, enter the point with our base, you know, it's our strike, and then how we release um, from the block. Those three things are the things that we um, spend time on. That's the progression. And so starting first with um, the base, we, we believe in uh, using same foot, same shoulder, or as I approach the block, um, the shoulder with which I'm attacking that block should mirror the, the leg that's up, and that's gonna give us power. Um, you know, it's easy to, easy to see when you're engaging a block that if, if your base is square, um, and, and by the way, the, the, you know, the one thing that's become apparent in, in this last month of study for me, okay, is that the better your player is with his hands, the less this matters. If, if you have a guy that has a really powerful punch, like Tavon Coney played square a lot at the line of scrimmage with his base. There's not a lot of stagger there because he could. He was so powerful and strong. And to me, he's, he's an exception. He's an outlier in that respect. Um, the, the more they're, they're good with their hands, the less this matters. The more your player is going to use like a forearm and a shoulder, like compress into contact, which we have to do both taking on a fullback, taking on a lineman, um, in any kind of collision of, of higher tempo, the more important it is that their near leg is up. Because if this is going to be kind of the blunt force in instrument, um, this is going to be the power. And so if I'm square and, and trying to use forearm, shoulder, or certainly if that leg is back and I'm, I'm soft in my lower, I'm going to absorb more power than I'm going to generate. Okay? And so, that's a, that's a point that we work on a ton. Everything we do in, in our footwork drills focuses on our whole foot in the ground. And so at the point of attack, it's important. It's physics, right? The more surface area, the more friction I can create with my cleat, uh, the more power I, I can generate um, or force I can generate on, on, on an object. And so that's another important point. And, and, and when you study that, you start to look at how important ankle flexibility is. And so at the point of attack, my ability to keep my cleats in the ground and bend um, my, my knees and keep, you know, keep my heel down, uh, the more powerful, the more effective I'm going to be both in footwork, change of direction, but also in generating power on an object. If you have players whose ankles are tighter, what will happen is their knees bend and their, their heels will come off the ground. And now you're going to have a player that can play on the surfaces of his toes he's gonna be a less effective mover and he's gonna be less powerful at the point of attack. Now I'm a living and breathing example that just because someone can keep their heel on the ground and, and bend their knee doesn't make them an elite athlete, right? Because that's why I'm here talking with you and not still playing in some fashion in the career. Um, but something to keep an eye on as you coach linebackers and, and there's things, I'm sure Coach Bayless has things and your strength programs and in your search and strength and conditioning you can find some things that can loosen ankle muscles up. That's an important thing to do. So with the strike, you were looking for a lax. We talk a lot about like the strike of a snake, relax and snapping hands. The palm wedge is the weapon. And so again, when we deliver a blow, we want to actually form that wedge with our hand, have the wrist cocked back like this, thumbs will be up, hands will be tight. And we want to use that surface because when it comes to your hand strike, that's going to be the surface that generates the, the mo most forceful blow. And so it's a relaxed hand. If, I, if I'm tight, if I'm, uh, you know, another thing to watch out for when and strike, if I'm lifting from low to high, right, um, I'm not going to generate power. We want strike through three joints. We want strike through shoulder, elbow, wrist. 
And so that when I make contact, those three joints are in line. And that strike should be eye level. Again, if I'm, if, if, even if you're hitting a sled, if I'm striking it low, I'm not generating power through that punch. My power is about lining up all these big muscles, but specifically those three. And if I have it at eye level, that's gonna make sure those are in line. And then um, the release, you know, we, we talk a lot about um, ripping and things like that. To me, block, taking on a block is about how fast I can get the block locked out and how fast from that point I can snatch it back and pull through. Because especially when I'm going against um, like a heavier player, maybe I'm giving up 100 pounds in weight at times, like my effectiveness is based on my ability to snap into the block and then as soon as I get that block jolted back, then release it back down. Use their weight and leverage against them, right? And it, it, it takes twitch and it takes explosion to do that. But I think those things can be trained. And so that's what we're gonna talk about here moving forward. So taking a look, this, this is from this spring. And literally what we're doing is just working getting near foot in the ground. And, and this was um, day three, because we're in pads. And so as you look at this drill, both, both drillers are meant to be um, working the technique. So as you look, um, they're just working uh, with each other here. The near foot should be down. Their feet should basically be interlocked. And um, the, the laser doesn't work. But if, if you look at the nearest pair to us, 22 is getting that near foot down. Um, 45 has a square base, right? And so that's, that's a negative rep. Up top, I think 33 looks good, and I think two looks okay. What we talk about power stagger with that near foot is not like just, uh, just a lead. It's not just the stagger that's important, meaning one foot in front of the other. It's a little bit elongated, and it's making sure, my, here's what we say, your feet should never be on the same plane. So if your feet are here, you're gonna be absorbing contact. If your feet are too um, staggered or narrow, they're on the same play this way, you, you don't have power. This is the power stagger. There's, there's separation, both lateral and vertical, and I got my near foot in the ground, that's what you're looking for. And so this is just a way for us to work into the point of contact, to really emphasize pounding those cleats down the ground. Again, you see 22 getting it, you see 33 getting it, you see two getting it, and 45 still a little too flat in his approach. Uh, an easy way to, to drill it. Here again, 33, getting it, just timing, getting the cleat down, making an emphasis to, to have it down. The next thing we'll work on in the same vein is how we move our feet through contact. And so what we wanna do is um, get them engaged with the near foot up and then have uh, the, the look player who's gonna be um, with their backs to us here is just meant to be really heavy, like you're an offensive lineman. And so what we tell them is we wanna shuffle through contact. We wanna keep our cleats in the ground. We have to be violent in the way we uh, separate from the block with our hands. And I have them actually, as they grip the pads, bend the pads in their hands. Like I want them to finish the day with fatigue and soreness in their hands. Like that to me is such an important part of this is how tight I can grip and control that block. All right, from there, they'll start the drill by pressing back violently, creating space for themselves, and then we just talk about step into the space you create. But as they do this, what you should see is whole foot in the ground and the feet working in a shuffle, right, to just continue to gain the ground that I'm creating through my press on the block. And this is meant to be a little bit of a grind. This particular rep, like, we'll finish posted up, so you see, we always talk about finishing on the back hip of the block um, so that we're off its power. We'll, we'll talk about that a little more here in a second. But the, the, the reason for this drill or what we're trying to accomplish this drill is understanding how to navigate um, the point of attack with our feet. Because if not, what I've, what, the reason we do this drill is because naturally what was happening is feet would die at contact or feet would like uh, stutter at contact. And any time they went dead or they started to lift off the ground, um, our guys got lifted out of the point of attack. All right, so that's what we're working. Some really good looks here. The middle two drills, just in terms of the shuffling footwork. If you see the pair that's um, the second pair in from the left, you'll see that whole foot in the ground, that lead foot down. 
The thing I don't like about the, the second pair in from the right is um, that's Asmar Bilal. Just so you can see he's on his toe, that front toe's down. Again, ankle flexibility coming into play there as you watch that. And so what we'll do then is, is in the same drill, and, and again, to create a little bit of a mental grind, is that we'll have them push on each other and just change who the lead is in the drill every time the whistle blows. And so all we're doing is, right now the guys coming off the yellow lines are on defense. They're driving through contact. As soon as the whistle blows, we change and the, the guys from the red line push back. And then again, once they've both gone twice, you die the drill. But, but there's meant to be this element of like repeated skill, but also like some mental toughness, you know, kind of engage them that way and, and gas them out. Just to take a step back, like the, everything that we do um, and everything I believe in is about muscle memory. And so what you're gonna see on this is, is not necessarily drill work that always directly applies to how a play plays out, um, you know, snap in, snap out. But it's meant to be skills that can be repeatable in a drill sequence that if we can do them a million times before a player finishes his career, he can actually access them in the moment um, it, it, during the game, right? That he takes ownership over that skill the more he does them in repeated sequence. That's why you see this silly pushing back and forth, right? We're trying to create that muscle memory in what the feeling is like, both at the, at the upper body level with my hand grip, with the separation, but in this drill, most importantly, with my feet. Whole foot in the ground, shuffling through contact. And so this is just another look at the same exercise. And again, we want near foot, the lead foot, whole foot down. And we want to be heavy, like we talk a lot about heavy cleats. You know, you try to create visuals, like there's dumbbells taped to your cleats, like they're heavy, drive them into the ground to create the surface area. And this is just a half line drill that I love that we do, but this is just going to be some examples of, of guys getting that near leg down. Here, again, we, we call this technique dent and slip. So anytime that we use the shoulder or the forearm to, to, to dent the block, um, a near foot needs to be down. I think we get it here. From there, we're denting to slip to the back hip. And so you're not, you're not like looking to stick on the front of that block, but you're looking to just create a little bit of knockback on that shoulder and then step through to the surface so that I can get on the back hip. I think we do it here pretty effectively. The reason you see the snap of the offensive lineman, obviously he's coming, he's, he's, he's off kilter, right? But we don't create that snap without that near foot, that power being in the ground. So that's fairly illustrative of that. Here's another one. Again, you can see as, as Asmar reaches the point here, it's a nice hand strike. Um, and, and not as important, like I said, if you're really good with your hands and firm with your hands, not as important with that near foot down. Here he's almost getting those feet on the same plane, on the same vertical plane, which would be um, negative because if they are or if he's not powerful enough, that he will get tipped here. But you can see him trying to work that near foot down and how it helps him uh, to create the power to get some knockback. And again, in these situations, we, we at times are giving up 100 pounds on these linemen. This is Bo Bauer, he's a freshman. So I gotta, I gotta work with Bo to, to, um, to use his hands more in a strike. He, he has a tendency, and if you have a longer player, that length can be their advantage, even though they don't always wanna use it. Bo's taller and longer, his punch is gonna be violent once he learns and tra to train it. Here again though, when you see when he's working the dent and slip, he's working to get that near foot in the ground. Near foot down, punch through. In the drill, the ball carrier for us is secondary. We're looking for power at the point of attack first. This drill for us is meant to be, I'm owning this gap and I'm playing off the combination. So here again, you see, he both feels where the back's going and that's why he's looking to escape back inside. But you can see again that near foot down and the power that he creates with his pad level where we want it, it's, it's a nice rep. And there it is again, just with the punch and the near foot down. All right, like I said to you, at times when I have a great hand strike, that near foot's not as important. 
And so in this one, Asmar using face and hands, and we'll get a little bit into the triangle punch here. But remember this clip, if it doesn't come up later, in terms of that triangle punch you're seeing, and then the violent punch through with the right arm, right? That allows him to play a little more square at the point of attack. If I am really good with my hands, my base is less significant. I think we've seen enough of this. Let me keep going. All right, this one was just a, an example of, um, in a practice rep this season, and of uh, attack at the point of attack. Th number two is who I want to uh, point out in particular. Again, he's working a dent and slip on the block, but notice just that near foot down at, at contact, right? Creating the power, knocking that shoulder back, and then slipping to the back hip of the block. Asmar 22 is working a technique we call rip and pry, um, which, is, which is actually removing the block surface. You can see his, his shoulders torque there right at the point. All he's doing is trying to get that blocker on his back to then slip through. We'll see that here in a minute. And then last one here, and th this, is, this is triangle punch related too, but um, just I'm playing the B gap. This is an unbalanced set, so he's taking on a tight end, not a tackle. You know, controlling the block with my hands, working a violent punch and separate to then snatch back. And, and what he would want to factor in on here, like 53 is in a bit of a bind. If he can snatch tight, um, if that jump cut goes tight inside 53, he can factor in on the play. This is another way we work same foot, same shoulder. We do it with a strike, but it, it's just on this little five man fixed sled, and it's just meant to put uh, your cleats in the ground of contact. What I don't like about this, is, and what you see here at the extension, what, where I would call this a negative drill, is in the finish. You see his feet get light and start to pound the turf. You guys see it? Like to me, that's setting himself up to be moved after contact. Better by 23. Near foot down, power stagger. Some of these guys are too square. 33 is way too spread. Knees out, toes out. Much better here by jersey number 11. Striking near foot down. Again, I don't want um, hopping feet through the point. There's a look at it, just another angle. So working near foot, heavy cleat in the ground. And, and this is, this is uh, just a play where like the, the near foot for number two on the left side of the screen as he fit the, the guard pull. You can't, the goal post gets in the way, but he gets that left cleat in the ground right there, and then you see the, the result of the contact is to knock the, the blocker back in. All right, so that is, um, that is the, the lower body. That's how we drill the lower half, and we compartmentalize all these movements. Like, to me, it, it, this is just my opinion, but the, the less I do with the drill, the more effective the drill is at accomplishing what I want it to accomplish. So we don't have a lot of um, multiple stimuli drill, right? Like our, our drills are really, really compartmentalized and tightened down to make sure we're accomplishing the, the movement or the sequence or whatever it is we're trying to accomplish within that drill. Punch, snatch, rip, um, probably um, easiest to teach just off the film. Um, we hit dummies here because there, there's an element that you can't create um, in hitting a, another player to me. Like um, when you want guys to, like to me this is training quick, quick twitch fire. And in order to do that, you know, you have to hit something that they're not concerned about, that they don't care about. And so uh, we put this dummy out there and this has just been the one, this particular dummy, and I, I'm not sure who makes it. Um, I'm sure we can find out if you're interested in it, but um, I, I've, I've ordered this dummy for la my last three stops because it, 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 it to me is the most effective at adding weight to the punch uh, and not just giving and lifting immediately. There's a little bit of, of knockback in it before it lifts. Um, I love the body position it gets us in and this is purely meant for hand strike. This is not triangle punch, so we're not using face and hands on this one. It's just hip to punch, you're gonna see eye level punch here, you're gonna see three joints through contact, and then you're gonna see once it's controlled, a violent snatch down. And um, I have at times, and I think I'm gonna go back to this because I think it's important, put a jersey, a tight jersey on this dummy too to get that grip work um, that I think is so important. But this is, this is um, Tranquil, and he's gonna be on this a bunch. What I don't like about this just off the of the jump is you can see the separation of his fingers. Like I can tell he's not gripping the pad, he's just lifting it up. Like I wanna see the corners of that pad turn because I wanna see his hand gripping into it. 
But what we're, what we're trying to do here is trigger through the hips, um, you know, snapping the arms, locking the elbows, framing the, the eyes with the thumbs, and then as soon as I get it locked, snatching it to the ground, trying to tip it, and then we will um, just work, step through off this dummy onto a back and come to balance. All right, so that's kind of the exercise. Here, this is a better one, right? Now, I do think he's probably a little too extended through the hips, and one thing you'll notice on this is I have them, so you wanna keep a little bit of hip flexion as you disengage from the block, because if, if you spin your hips through, obviously you have no a twitch and power left. The thing I like about this rep versus the other one, what, one thing you'll notice is, and we talk about this, step into the space you create, so when I, when I do uh, shoot my hands on the dummy and I move it back, I should have tight footwork into that space. And then uh, that'll allow me to keep some hip coil that'll allow me to snatch off the block. Uh, the thing I like about this one rather than the other one, his, there's still space in his fingers, but I can see it grip at the top and then he locks it out in full, right? And when, you know, like a lot of times talk about just like going through a door, if you're gonna walk through a door without pushing it, do you want your elbow bent or do you want it locked out? And like, that's the power point, that's what you want. Uh, to have happen. Here's another look at it. Again, we put uh, someone on the sled just to create a little more weight and he's just coming off on an angle to the tackle, just another way to drill it. This is a good example. This is Jack Lamb as an early enrollee freshman. And so you're seeing a guy hit this dummy from the, for the first time. And so what you're seeing is him like springing it. You see his hips all the way locked out. He's not stepping in that space he creates. He's kind of launching at the pad. You see elbow bent, hands spaced. Uh, and him falling off contact, right? This is another look at, this is him, again, early enrollee freshman, where there's no power generated here. I mean, the difference between what you just saw with 23 and what, you, what you're what you seeing with 31 is striking. This is gonna be him in bowl prep this year. So, like about eight months of work. Um, and you should see a different power in the strike, a different snap to it. Um, here's another look at it. And he's just, he's learning to generate power with his hips and hands. He's learning to snap his hands and violently disengage from the block. And it's just a skill that you train over time. All right, so that, that is our bread and butter. We use that sled and we do that drill all the time. Okay, this one is see the need, fill the need for me. Like if I, like with Tavon and Drew and the way the room was shaped last year, like they, they played the game naturally with their, their face and their eyes and hands. And so I wasn't concerned about, at the point of attack, uh, them using those you know, points on their body to physically disengage blocks. Um, the group I have now needs to train this a little more. And so we use this lev sled as a, as a way to work eye contact with a blocker. And we use eyes as the, as the trigger point to make sure we're keeping our head up. And the, the one thing I want to point out in this, and this is, I'm sure, I mean, everyone does this drill, but, you know, when you have a guy that does this right, when his base stays tight through contact, when he strikes with his face and hands at the same time, you'll see this sled kind of rock back twice, right? It, it rocks back off the initial thrust, and then it rocks back off the lift of the pad. Um, and so that's important. And when you have guys, this is a really good one in terms of just generating power and pop. You see that sled popping up twice, right? He's keeping his base tight. He's a little extended when it's high, and I think the disengage is a little unrealistic here. This drill is meant to just um, um, teach them how to propel themselves with their eyes first into, into a blocker. Th this is Shane Simon. He's learning how to play in the box. And so what you'll notice here, first of all, and you can't tell from this angle, but I, I'm, that's me kneeling on the ground there. I, could, I saw it, like he, his face touched the sled, but he didn't strike it with his eyes. And so you don't see that rock back that you saw on the other two, because he's not generating the, amount of the same amount of power. The second thing that happens through contact is look at his feet die, and then look at his base spread out. And so by not having those points in the drill, he's losing pop and power through the sled. And you can even see in, when he disengages, rather than pulling through, he's having to go around. Why? Because he's not moving it at all. You know, those are, those are, here's another one. He gets his base spread. He's using his face a little more here, but the spread of the base dissipates the power through the strike. And so he's getting a little better here, but you see he's still jumping that base wide. And now you see, as he's keeping it tighter, you see that sled rocking back twice. That's, that's in one day. Right, and so you just keep teaching, keep teaching. This is gonna be just a bunch of clips of guys um, 
working hand strike in games, right? So this is Tranquil there on the offensive lineman, right? Uh, working off the block, punching the block, striking the block, right? Hands tight, um, violent strike. I'm just gonna show a few of these just to keep things moving. There it is again, right? Punch, snatch, rip. His hands are tight, he's through contact, he's separating from the block. Like to see a little more disengaged, a little more pull through from him here, but he controls the lineman based off his initial shock. And to me, we don't get that. I mean, what you're, I mean, look, he, that kid is immensely talented. And by the way, being a great coach is, a, it's, just, it's really about coaching great players, which I'm all good with. But I will say this to you, you know, what you're going to see is the more you can bottle up whatever twitch your player has, and I know that there are varying levels to that, teach them to bottle it up and unleash it. The more they do it, the more it's going to become second nature to them, the more they're going to win at the point of attack. And so, um, they, you know, just like you saw Jack Lamb, you guys will watch him practice tomorrow, you'll see a player that's way more confident bottling that twitch up and letting it loose at contact now than he was before. This is Drew on the perimeter here with the engaged with the tight end, again, punching and separating from the black and then snatching it to the ground. This was against Ball State this year. This is Tavon on the guard, punch snatch trip to disengage on, on, the, uh, on the back. You see him there, tight hand. Like he's, again, that's the square base I was talking about. He doesn't have that power step down, that near foot down, but he's so powerful with his hands and tight with his hands that he doesn't need it. This is again Tavon getting over the top, using his hands, snatching and pulling through the block. That's Drew at the point on the, on the puller, right? <clears throat> and so for here, as I'm compressing, what I would coach Drew on here is that as you compress and use the blunt force instrument now as shoulder forearm, now I need that power stagger. I need that near foot down at contact. But you see him punch through his, his strike and he's still able to snatch the block uh, to the ground. This is, this is from two years ago. And uh, that's Tavon there uh, with the near leg strike, uh, kind of wadding things up in, inside. And then this is 48. And I don't love this because you see his base getting all tangled up, but this is almost same foot, same shoulder to then unleash through um, uh, to, to physically knock a, a block back. All right, so then another thing we do off this is um, a drill we call separate, snatch, and release. And the reason we do this drill is teaching players how to maintain foot movement through contact, right? Uh, foot movement and leverage. So our guys, just like your guys, when you teach them to play, like so we have, you know, we, we pull guys from all over to play linebacker at Notre Dame. We have converted safeties. We've got rovers that we've moved inside. And so there's an element of training to this that we have to be uh, good at. And the first thing that happens when you teach a, a safety to play in the box is they want to do everything in, in parts and pieces. So, um, you know, once they get to the point and they want to throw their strike, their feet die. Uh, if they're trying to control, control an edge and they get separation, their feet die. If they try to find the block, or excuse me, the ball carrier off the block, their feet die. And so we want to put them in positions where they're engaged, they're separating, and all the while their feet are, are working to, to maintain leverage. Whole foot in the ground, this is firm leg, free leg shuffle for us. Excuse my face on this shot because it's repulsive. Uh, but all we're doing here is with leverage, maintain leverage, and I'm telling them separate, and that's where you see the lockout, and I'm telling them release, and that's where you see them dumping me to the ground. And I tell them too with this, we want violent, and all they're doing is just kind of balancing up on a target to finish. Um, you know, uh, and, and I just see this too. This, this is probably my first year here and I'm under the watchful eye there of the head coach, which again, um, if you're a position coach, you understand how that feels too. Um, and he's looking at me like this new linebacker coach who's getting dumped to the ground by his linebackers, probably not a great look. But anyways, you know, to me the finish point here, just having the ability to have some body control off the snatch to train that, and I talked about not wanting multiple stimuli in a drill, but to me this is a critical part of success working through the point of attack. But I tell them that I want to snatch off the block in a manner that dish rags the, the and, and the look guys know too that they're going to get dumped and we want to train that twitch here. We're not trying to make, make friends. This is again Jack Lamb as an early enrollee freshman. Um, this is him in bowl prep and you see a little more violence through his pull and again he's just training the skills, training the separation. The reason we do this drill is so that our feet don't die 
through contact. That's it. Uh, because just like you guys, we, we sometimes try to take on blocks and parts. And so this is going to be some looks at guys effectively, move, like this is Tavon up top, and just see the active feet through contact here. And some of this is going to be punch that trip too. Some of this is going to be combining the skills, but you see him moving his feet to, to keep the leverage, not letting his feet die of contact. This is tranquil on the strike of the tight end. Look at the, look at the violent hands there, and then look at the feet continue to move as he, as he works to a post position. And then, you know, because he's a great player, he's also able to snatch off and, and factor in on, on the tackle. I think this is Asmar. Nope. This is Drew again on the, uh, on the, on the lineman uh, working up to the second level on the pull there. Right? And so he's, he's called in an, uh, and he's, he's off his fit. He needs to be inside hip of 77. He's caught short. How does he account for that? He works his feet through contact, snatches out the front side, and, and is able to factor in on the play. This is Asmar. So you see Asmar up top. Feet active through the strike. Because I move my feet, I don't end up on, on the ground. Now we got to get to a point where we're snatching this off and finishing it. I'm going to kind of forward through some of these so we can keep going. So then from there, there's really two techniques we use or teach at the point. We've trained base, near foot, near so shoulder. We've tra trained strike, punch, snatch, rip, and then triangle punch on the left sled. So now we're talking about what are our point of entry techniques. How am I doing on time? Okay, good. And so this, this will be the, kind of the finish point here. And I'm sorry not to get to tackling, but listen, if you find me tomorrow, I'll talk tackling until um, you're, you're ready to go home. Um, so the two things we do, and like I, I've coached in, in my experience undersized players, and I'm sure you guys have done the same. And so I want to teach them, like you just watched a bunch of guys who you know, are bigger or stronger, have the ability to strike. No matter what the size is of your player, you can teach them how to be twitchy and strike. I promise you, if you just keep working it, and again, the mechanics of the fundamentals at the point of attack are important. But in situations where you have a faster, more athletic player, to me, more important that he learns to remove surfaces at the point of attack, to slip blocks, and to make plays through the line. Our goal is to play in the backfield, not always to create a fence at the line of scrimmage. And so to do that, we have to, to learn to remove surfaces. That's rip and pry. All right, punch and post is a way we, in situations where we have to make contact with the blocker, the way we work half a man to punch through thick to finish on the back hip posted up. So everything we do at the point of attack is how can I quickly get to the back hip of the blocker to get off his power? If I turn into the block or if I punch the block and keep it fronted up and he's still, I'm still on his train track, I'm gonna get moved. Get through into the back hip and now there's nothing for him to press on. Get through into the back hip, now there's nothing for him to press on. And one thing that's interesting with removing surfaces, and we train this actually, we'll have a drill where they'll be fronted up and they're, they're pulling violently their, like in this case, their left elbow back and firing their right elbow forward and it's a pass rush drill, but we're teaching them to move their torso independent of their hips. Because if I can keep my hips square, I keep my power at the line of scrimmage. And, and by removing a surface, I can quickly retort through and be through the line of scrimmage. And so just looking at this, um, you know, they're coming out of the shoots here, but what you're gonna see is take the surface, torque, retorque, and I just say twitchy through the gap. And so they're learning how to, to keep leverage. This is they're lined up, they have a line to the ball, they don't need to engage the block, they're slipping the block at the line of scrimmage. Literally the commands are step left torque, step right retorque, twitchy through the gap to finish. That's kind of the, the commands that I'm give, giving behind. Step right torque, step left retorque, twitchy through the gap. You see, you see how easily they're moving their torso independent of their hips. I think an incredibly valuable skill. This shows up over and over and over again. The one thing here that we're, we're getting to the point at with Drew almost, you really have to govern the amount of torque because the, the more I go this way, the longer it's gonna take me to get back. And so literally just do enough to get that block on your back and then violently retorque. And when we do the drill, you're engaging your core the entire time. So even when I'm doing it, it's, it's an intentional violent retorque back and I can feel my abs working 
look at a couple of these and, and then we'll move out of here. So this is Asmar, and again, it's just subtle, but as he works, he's gonna pull the surface back. He's not gonna engage this block, pull that left, arm, left, left shoulder, uh, excuse me, right, sh right shoulder back, get the block on my back, propel myself into contact. Tranquil here, back hip win, right? Get to the back hip of the blocker. So again, pull the surface, I don't need to engage it, I see my fit, retorque through, get my hips back square. If I've lost any integrity of square hips through the line, I'm on the back of the block and I haven't had to engage it. And again, I think a great technique for undersized linebackers, uh, for fast linebackers, athletic, here's a stretch play that kind of winds back on Drew and all he's gonna do is just work to the back hip. Now his hips are turned here, so how quickly and violently can I get back square and stepping through with the near leg? Same thing here. And, and there's a cut, like you see him get that block on his back, retorque through square. And, and there's a bunch of, play, like the other thing, the other place this shows up a ton is on perimeter plays um, where, you know, it's screens and there are linemen coming to you. I mean, like the thing that bothers me the most when I watch our players at the point, like if I'm attacking a gap, don't engage the outside arm. Like how quickly can I get, if I'm punching, how quickly can I get that near hand posted up, leave this one free because that's my leverage to make the tackle. Big problem when we got here was hips turning into blocks when I punched, trying to hit everything in a triangle square, ball leaking outside. And so what are ways that we can cut to the back hip to create the, the wall we need at the line of scrimmage to down the ball carrier effectively. And so again, thanks so much for allowing me to share. Hopefully you took something from this. Like I said, you may leave and say, I, we can't use any of it. If there's something that you wanna talk further about, you please feel free to reach out and I'd love to talk to you more. Uh, again, it's been an honor to share with you. Thanks so much for your time. You guys may have missed this, but I found humor in it. Coach Lee's son's over here, and the only time that he, he looked up during the presentation was to watch his dad get thrown to the ground by our linebackers. So that was good. That was good. Um, real quick, just a reminder for, for tomorrow before we get to the end. Tomorrow uh, we have Coach Bayless, our strength coach. We'll be in here at 8.30. He'll bring the energy. So, uh, you know, get up early and get in here. Um, tomorrow when you come tomorrow, though, the building will be closed. So gate 